recording. All right, my friends, we got Christian Morrison from Rapid City, South Dakota online with us. And uh, as you know, man, I've been talking about Rapid City. Big time. I, I sat on a uh, webinar uh, yesterday through the American the Center for American Experiment with uh, with Christy oh, Noel, no. who's the governor of uh, Rapid City yesterday. And uh, and she was saying they're getting demand for moving to South Dakota like crazy on yeah. the Economic Development Committee. She's the governor, just I want to clarify, she's the governor of South Dakota, not just right. Rapid City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right on, right on, governor yeah, yeah. of the whole state, yeah. right, not just the mayor yeah. of South right, 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 right. It's the governor yeah, yeah. of the whole state. Yeah. And, uh, it's funny, actually, because she said explicitly she was not interested in running for president. They all say that, but the reason was because right. she likes being out in their horse farm. Apparently, she has some horse farm out there someplace in South Dakota. Yeah. So I came across Christian on some videos he did on uh, real estate in South Dakota, in Rapid City, because uh, I've always been intrigued by it. And, uh, and I just reached out to him and said, hey, would you want to jump on this video today? And they are mountain time. So it's, uh, while well, it's 1030 a.m. here at the East Coast, it's 830 there. So yep. uh, Christian's brought out and bushy-tailed and ready to rock and roll. So Christian, welcome to the uh, YouTube channel, man. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I love doing this kind of stuff. So. And you have a YouTube channel, uh, just Christian Morrison. Is that what yep. it is? Okay. It's Christian Morrison. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And yeah. you started doing that channel about a year or so ago? or 10 months. Yeah. What yeah. was the, uh, the genesis of starting a YouTube channel for, uh, for you? I always wanted to do it. I've always been like, so when I started in real estate, I started just about five years ago now. And I done pretty much all my business from social media. Yeah. Vast majority. So YouTube is always in the back of my mind, but I was like, I'm really particular about doing things. I, I can be paralyzed through analysis for yeah. sure. You know, that whole paralysis analysis for sure. Everything, everybody can. Yeah. But for me, I was like, I want to have a good direction and not just, I've seen so many people have random shit everywhere. Right, you know, right, right. Everything's so random. So I was like, I want to have a good direction for it and an idea of what I want to do before I start it. So it's all kind of makes sense for me. I have you had I you you did a video yesterday where you got someone from Minnesota refound you via YouTube? Have you found clients so far via YouTube and inquiries? It's, it's been absolutely insane. I'm telling you, you know, man, it's yeah. crazy, right? It's yeah. insane. Yeah, and I only I have 200 subscribers, right? And I get I get one one to three people a day that reach out to me that are moving here. That's uh, man, that's nuts, man. Is it there, is nuts. Yeah, there's another guy. I, I just saw yesterday who had a YouTube channel and his, and I, I don't know who this guy is. I just, yeah. I, yeah, I just had one video that wasn't very impressive. And I, and yeah. I, if, if you're friends with, I don't say that mean, meanly. Just, oh, was, do you mean he's in rapid, rapid city? Yeah. It was, oh, okay. uh, he, he, it was, it was a weird video. I said, uh, that, that it was, yeah. it was strange. And anyway, yeah. nothing wrong with the guy, but are you yeah. the only guy in town doing a rapid city YouTube channels? That you I don't, know? you know, to be honest, I don't pay attention to other people. Okay. Uh, other agents. So, as far as I know, yes, but I don't really look. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if you're getting, I mean, yeah. you got, you know, a couple hundred subscribers and you're still getting yeah. you know, one to two people contacting you a day. That's freaking right. nuts, man. It is. Now, crazy, you've been yeah. in real estate as a professional, you said, for five years now? Just about, yeah. Okay. As a, yeah. as a, so you've been selling and buying, you know, you've been helping clients yeah. you know, find properties and whatnot for those five years? Yep. Have you seen in your experience like a, a, a sudden spike recently because of, I don't know, coronavirus, because I mean, who knows what's going on, but I mean, have you seen a yeah. spike in demand? So when I, when March hit, I was the busiest I've ever been in my life. Um, I was like super busy and it's just for momentum, you know what I mean, building up over time. Um, but when March hit, that initial like first two weeks, I plateaued a little bit that yeah. two weeks. And then right after that two weeks, it's been insane. So here, I think a lot of people want to move here now, especially now because we're more open, we're more yeah. free than a lot of other areas are. You know, in our governor, she has more balls than most other governors do, yeah. honestly. Um, so, so yeah, so since, since the coronavirus, we have had. So I'll give you an example. Before the coronavirus, houses under 250,000 were selling like three or, in three or four days, which is pretty okay. damn fast, right? Now it's more like two, three hours. <laughs> Man, yeah. Yeah. two or three hours. Yep. That's crazy. So if you've got a house, you know, say three bed, two bed, half, you know, 225 on a quarter acre, you know what I'm saying? A pretty typical gone. American house. That sucker is gone. gone just like that. Yeah. Man, I mean, I, is that, is that boomed? I mean, I don't want to say boom, but bubble, I hate saying bubble, but. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like if you look over the last 15 years in Rapid City, the average price increase is three and a half percent which is pretty solid, pretty good. It's a good yeah. investment. It's inflation, you know, 
Um, in 2017, we had a 7% increase, which was like, holy crap, this area. 2018, we had a 9% increase. Two, and then, two, was that last year? Yeah, 2019 was 9%. This year, so far, we're up like 7%, just whoa, 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 whoa. half a year. So you averaged the last 15 years, three and a half, then in 2017, 18, 19, has been the high single digits, and it's already, uh, that's, mm. It's crazy. Yeah, so you know, I bought my house last June. Uh, I bought it for 157000 Today, it's worth like almost one ninety. a year later. Man. Keep in mind, I did upgrades to it and stuff, and I bought it below market value. But even that being said, it's, it's crazy to me. I'm like, holy crap. You is, know? That, is that because they're just as in the inventory? I mean, you know, like you can look at all – I mean, so let me give you an example. I'm from Portland, Maine originally. Yep. And there's no place to build in Portland. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anything that, that – but I can't imagine that with, with South – you know, your neck of the woods. Well, the like problem is we're underbuilt. Um, we have the land, but we, don't, we haven't had the houses being built. So – Recently, the city has approved 750 houses to be built. Thank uh, God. Thank God. So they're building them. You've been to Rapid City? I've never been, ever. Okay. So on the east side of town, there's this, you know, giant piece of land near some, like, there's a shopping center over there, restaurants, stuff like that, and there's no houses over there. So they're now developing that area and put 700 houses over there. So that'll, that will help, honestly, because it's, gotcha. when it's this way, when it's like houses sell like that, and, you know, gotcha, 10%. Man. Yeah, ten percent month over month. It's not. I, I don't like that personally. I prefer like a steady five yeah, yeah. percent. Oh, you know. Yeah. So, but but I mean, it is what it is for now. I mean, if you in a, any other market, you can't buy a house and make money in anything sooner than four years on average, right? right? right, right. And now you can make money in a year. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. So well, that's the exact op. Let me. I got my. I got my. I got four kids, and they're. Oh, you're getting yeah. Real. You know, and I got a dog here too. So if you see me looking yeah. over, it might be because my dog's growling at me. Um, Sounds good. But uh, but it's just it's so you're exact opposite where I'm from in Portland, Maine. In Portland, Maine, they had there's no place to build. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they put restrictions on build. But anyway, but you guys just you didn't have enough. You had the the space, but just not the houses. So it sounds yeah. like now they're like, look, we've got to bring yeah. that. We've got to open up the inventory to, because the the demand is there for sure. Yeah, we have one. We, you know, we don't really have any trapped housing here. You know, like that super cookie cutter until the last couple of years. Ah, right. And we have one trap builder here, and they built these two subdivisions. And they sold them all out in a matter of months. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's crazy. So if you're a builder, would you have opportunity to go and in, in Rapid City and, and make headway? You know what I'm saying? I mean, big time. I try to convince. Actually, my uh, fiance is a really good friend who owns the company, and um, or her husband owns the company in Sioux Falls. Okay. And I've been trying to convince him to come build here for a long time. So I still, I think he's actually pretty close to doing it. I hope he does. But yeah, there is a lot of opportunity here. Actually, I did a video the other day. And I, I asked, I said, what's, uh, what are you guys seeing out there if you're in the construction business and stuff? Yeah. And, uh, and these guys are, they're all moving. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. they're moving their, you know, they're, they're moving product. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, it's just some of these areas though you got it you know the regulations and all the codes and stuff and just it's it's nuts and i mean it's just not so not as insane here our our laws and stuff are pretty lenient on most people here on most industries especially well tell us all right, so rapid city you said it was going to be probably 90 degrees today so it's uh, july 9th is uh tell us a bit i've literally never been to south dakota yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason i got intrigued I, I i interviewed with this guy a financial planner probably five years ago and, uh, he's, and I can't remember if he reached out to me or I reached, I can't remember. But anyway, long story yeah. short, I said, dude, you're in South Dakota. I'm from Maine. No way am I moving to South Dakota. Yeah. It's too cold. <laughs> he goes, you don't understand. It, it, Rapid City isn't as cold as what you think. It's I not, mean, yeah. Yeah. But then some guy posted, um, he said, it's like the banana belt. Or what do you say? That? I can't remember. They call it something where you got the Chinook winds that come through that keep it warm in the wintertime. Yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not super into like that. I don't really know how that works. Um, I have heard that kind of stuff too, but I'll tell you what the weather's like for sure. And the weather here is more mild than I live in Colorado before here. Oh. Much more, much more mild than Colorado. Really? Much more mild. Yeah. Where I mean, in Colorado did you live, Christian? You know where Pueblo is? Where it's called? Pueblo. No. Oh yeah, South Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know exactly. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I lived there and worked in Colorado Springs when I lived there. Oh, um, man. Love yeah. It. Yeah. Right. Yeah, All it's right, a great area too. Down there. Yeah, it reminds me, you know, Rapid City reminds me of a small Colorado Springs. Dude, That's what it reminds dude. me of. Yeah. <laughs>
I know jealous. exactly what you're talking about. There was a, yeah. when uh, we drove through South Carver, I interviewed this back. We lived in Phoenix in the late 90s. I interviewed yeah. in Denver. We drove back. I remember the Blood Blue and then uh, and seeing um, like Colorado City in these little Yeah, towns. yeah. Like, wow, that, gorgeous. Colorado City is in Colorado Springs, but it's just like a little bitty city inside there. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. So it's you're an saying awesome area. Like Rapid City is kind of like that? It reminds me a lot of it because – you have to come. You guys got to come at least visit and see what it's like, yeah, because man. you're in a little. You know, our city sits and there's mountains yeah. around the city. You know, and so like you can't see it, but right out this window back here, when I tried to show you earlier, is called M Hill, and there's like, it's in the middle of the city. You can mountain bike, you can hike yeah. it. There's a river that runs around it. There's awesome little. Uh, I did a video close to it on YouTube. Yeah, I saw that yeah. video. Yeah, right. Yeah, on. and that's you know that's in the middle of town. <laughs> That's like two minutes from my house. You know what I mean? So that kind of stuff is what I love about it. Rapid City, in your experience, relative to that part of Colorado, is actually milder weather than yeah. – uh, this is just your opinion. I get that. But yeah. just then it would be in that area of Colorado. I don't know if it's just my opinion. I'd say definitely it's milder just because really? I spent so long. And, yeah, temperature-wise, for sure, temperature-wise. I mean, we'll get, we'll get into the 20s, you know. Right. We'll, get, we'll get cold here. But what happens a lot, and it's funny, I actually recorded a video yesterday that I'm uploading today about the weather here. So that's funny you ask. Um, but so the weather here, what will happen is in the winter, we'll get a lot of snow, like a couple of days, and then it'll get back up in the 50s and it'll all melt. Oh, right. It happens all the time. So we get, I like to have a little bit of snow. Yes, me too, man. So we get, we get snow and it doesn't stay, it doesn't mound up and keep going, keep going. We actually, I lived in a lot of different areas growing up because my dad moved us around a lot. So I lived in Indiana too. Uh, in Indiana, snow would come and it would not leave for like six months. That bad. You know? yeah. uh, then it gets dirty and it gets, yep. you know, oh, that's the way yeah. for me, man. You get, yeah. Spain, you get, it snows in November and that sucker's still there in March. It's just freaking yeah. dirty, ugly. And you're like, all right, it was cool in November. Let's get this gone now. You know yeah, totally. Yeah. And I don't like that kind of stuff personally, but I love it here because it'll snow, melt away. We'll get some more snow to melt away. Yeah. Yeah. And the weather seems to go from like super cold. We'll have maybe like a week stretch where it's in like the low 30s, the high 20s. But other than that, it'll be 30s to 50s back and, and forth. And uh, you get a lot of sun there too, right? It's not a lot of sun in the winter winter too, which is not awesome. like Seattle or anything like that. No, no. yeah. No, that's crazy, man. That's yeah. fantastic. I like the idea of the snow coming and then going, coming and yeah. going. That's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, know, so here's the rapid, big thing. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's, go ahead. What's weird is that's Rapid City. You get up into the hills, which yeah. if you want to be, when you're busy, you'll see what I'm talking about. But you get up into the hills, and the hills are 45 minutes away is the furthest town. Um, so they're really close, all the towns are. Those, the snow stays because they're high. Uh, and that has to do with the banana belt, whatever that, right, that right, is. Right. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know that one on the weather. But, um, but yeah, whatever that is, it, it stays in the mountains. It gets colder up there. But here, it just dissipates. It's awesome. no, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, so the question that everyone wants to ask is just me, actually. Uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> are mosquitoes a problem up there? So I originally grew up in the South. That's where I originally, oh. until I was like 13. Oh, um, where? We're in the South. So I actually lived in Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I told you we've lived all over, man. <laughs> so Shreveport, Louisiana, this is a super deep South. You know, really it is. So there, mosquitoes are horrendous, yeah, you know. Right, right, right. Um, I was actually born in Oklahoma. So Oklahoma and Louisiana are the two Southern states. So that's what I compare it to personally. <laughs> So we would have zero compared to there to me. But I mean, we have, I've probably got, since I've lived here, right. five mosquito bites. Yeah, I got you, time. Well, if you're, if Treeport, you know about humidity and yeah. the heat and the mosquitoes. And, oh, uh, yeah. And, all right, gotcha. So yeah. it's not anything like that. That, man, I tell you. No, no. I freaking hate mosquitoes, man. Oh, me too. Me oh. too. Me too. You're too. just out there on 4th of July in Atlanta. You know, you're trying to light some fireworks. And they're floating all around you like God, they love me because I'm sweet, man. I'm sweet. Obviously, if you get close to the water, like uh, we were walking by the river yeah, right, right. a couple weeks ago, and I got like, two mosquito bites, and I was yeah. pissed about it. You know, I was like, freaking kidding me? Two <laughs> mosquito bites, you know, because I hate them. But, uh, but no, you get anywhere else, like my house, I've never had any there. Um, you got in my like in the middle. Now, do you live in Rapid City proper? Are you out in like the suburbs? Are you ever, yeah, I live downtown actually. Okay. Oh, okay. basically, cool. basically downtown. Yeah. So, can you like walk to work and stuff? Or yeah, well, my office is on like the outskirts of downtown. Okay. So it probably take me like half hour to walk here. 
right. Um, but All I right, walked gotcha. down. So I've seen I you walked do a video downtown every day. You're walking downtown and stuff. I was like, and they get, I, that was pretty cool. Yeah, you I walk downtown every day. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's freaking yeah. awesome. The videos you do are great because it, Thank you. a lot of people do videos like this, the house I'm listening, which is all right. I mean, but all houses, right. yeah, that's not the, the issues yeah. for me, at least the scenery, the, the vibe. All right. So with Spoke, Spokane, with a uh, rapid city, I'm thinking about Spokane. I, I don't know why right. that came to my mind, but uh, there's a lot of, and I, this could be tough for you to answer, but you know, with a lot of, um, uh, I hate to say tweakers, but a lot of meth people, if you know what I'm saying, that are oh, just yeah. Yeah. laying around. Is there any kind of homeless drug issue? I, there's always, I get that. But I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, relative to a place like Spokane, Portland, Maine, um, are you finding that there's a lot of homeless and drugs that are running around down there? Yeah, the, um, there's like a giant meth problem in South Dakota. Yeah. But the problem lies in between the cities. Uh, it's oh. not really from, from what I know anyways. It's what in know, rural areas. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much land, you know, in between there. And that tends to be where everything's going on. Um, homeless issue, we don't really have it. I mean, we have, if we have homeless people, there's maybe 10. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, right, right. You know what I mean? Um, and they go somewhere at night. I've never seen them, like anybody sleeping on the streets or anything. You know, look at the occasional beggar that yeah. walks downtown, but it's pretty rare. But you're um, not getting accosted, you know, every time you go downtown by 10 no, people, no, you know, playing like no. a zombie. Oh, yeah. Not at all, good. no. Yeah, can, yeah, I hate that kind of stuff. Colorado Springs is one of the worst areas I've been like that. that that's, no, that's yeah. what that's what I think. Colorado Springs, not Spokane, because yeah. we went to Colorado Springs. I had this it's horrible. In, I, I and I couldn't believe it. I was like sitting yeah. there thinking. I thought I had this envision of like South Park, you know, South Park, yep. Colorado. Yeah. You're from South Park, it's like Colorado, I was like, this is. I, I was I was devastated because I always had yeah. Colorado Springs in my head is like this mecca of beauty, and it was just and it ruins beauty. the whole it ruins the whole experience. It does, man. Yeah. It yeah. does. Yeah, I agree. Oh, um, no, but we don't have that at all here. You know, and do we have, and there's, a, do you remember the whole campaign? It was in national news, like meth, we're on it. Everybody kind of made a joke out of it. Um, and, you know, from what I know, and I know people like a law enforcement here and stuff, it right. tends to be all in between the two cities here. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Is so there so, a, much, so much empty land? Why would you go in the cities? Well, like, yeah. No, you know what I mean? Well, not that, but why would you, well, is there minor, there's no minor league baseball or anything. Like, what do you do for, like, sport activities up in so the So, there is a, um, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not super into baseball, so I don't right. really know how this all works, but there's, like, a triple A or double A team, however that works. Okay. And Spearfish here, which is 45 minutes away. Oh, um, okay. Sioux Falls on the other side of the state has a indoor football league, um, and they're pretty good, they're like, two steps below the pros, whatever. Yeah, and right. Same thing with baseball there. And then we also have a, um, just under the pros hockey team in town. Oh, that's what, but the the Rapid City. Yeah, they're called the Rapid Rapid City Rush. Oh, they're like yeah, a pro hockey team. Yeah, they're pretty fun to go oh, to actually. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. love hockey, man. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Is there any uh, schools or universities in Rapid City? Or I don't even yeah, know where so there, there's yeah. a university here, and that is um, South Dakota School of Mines. Oh. So that's a lot of engineers and yeah. trades like that, and then up in um, Spearfish. There is Black Hill State University. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, the, uh, that's good. So that's a bigger school. The School of Mines is in Rapid City. The South yep. Dakota School of Mines. Yeah, that's interesting, man. I yeah. Two, really... So you asked me yesterday about tuitions. Um, it might have been a personal question, but I don't know. But I was going to bring it up really quick. Um, so average tuition, you save about five thousand a year in state here. So mm -hmm. Mines is the most expensive school. Yeah. Here, and it's, I think it's eleven thousand a year uh, for a resident. And then Black Hill State is eight thousand five hundred a year or something. Well, that's and crazy eight, because uh, about all of them are eighty five hundred. All the other schools. The school of mines. I mean, I remember the Colorado school of mines. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Same and, same uh, program. Yeah. Yeah, and they man, you get a job out of that. You graduate from school of mines, you're getting a job in two seconds flat. You know what I'm it's saying? It's the same like, thing here. Yeah. The, the, actually, I think this one has a higher average pay than the, than the Colorado ones coming out of school, which is crazy. Yeah. So you love in Rapid City? Is your wife, is your fiance from Rapid City? No, we're both transplants. Um, yeah, she came actually from Texas. Yeah. Um, and then we, we met here. And then How did we she met, end up in Rapid City from Texas? She actually got a scholarship um, to run at one of the schools here. Oh, man. Yeah, she got a full ride. I guess they don't get full rides anymore, but whatever the close thing to a full ride is, is a runner. So Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that when she was working at a coffee shop. So. Like, like you saw her say, "Hey, lady, you want to, you know?" All right, so I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you the truth here, Josh, just because why, why not? Um, I uh, so wherever we met, I was 
about a year out of a five-year relationship okay. when I met her. So, but it, it, and so I'm 25. So that relationship I was in, I was in since I was 17. All right, all right. You know what I mean? Or sorry, 18. 18. Right. I'd been in that relationship for a long time. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to learn how to pick up women. So I just started reading, watching everything I could and learning how to pick up women, basically. And I'm like, uh, I grew up super religious, super, uh, I'm a, I'm a Christian, you know, I have super religious at heart. So I didn't like, didn't want to like sleep with women. So, to right, speak. Right. but I was like, I just want to learn how to do this. Like, right. I like their number every I time. I talk to them. Exactly. Yeah, not right. be nervous. So right. I'll tell you, I got obsessed with it. And I got really good at it. Okay. So I got to the point where I was like, okay, my new goal, I can now get it. Like it was like a 50%. Like if I go up to someone, there's a 50% chance I would get their number, which is incredible, honestly. Uh, most people is like 10%. So right, right. 50% I was proud of, right? So long story short is um, I, I was like, how do I get girls to reach out to me instead of me reach out to them? So I like tried some things on social media to like just put myself out there more in a certain way. And so she was one of the first girls that actually asked for my number. No kidding. Yeah. So it was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy, so man. It was crazy. So I actually, I saw her a few times and I told my brother, I was like, I called her the, what did I call her? I called her the hot one that worked at the coffee shop. I was like, she's super attractive. She's, yeah, she is. And then one day I just kind of, I would like chat with her here and there, you know. Um, and then one day she was just like, Hey, la la, we should spark a conversation. I follow you on Instagram. And then from there, she asked, she messaged me on Instagram, asked for my number, and I was like, all right, let's do this. So the rest is history, I guess you could oh, say. <laughs> but it actually is a great segue. You got to put yeah. yourself out there. And that's why oh, I want to talk about your business specifically. Um, yeah. So one of the things that was intriguing to me is because putting yourself out there is tough to do. You know what I'm saying? Because that means a lot of people are going to say, you suck, I hate you, you're stupid, you're too yeah. young, or you're yeah. whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They'll, they'll find anything to criticize you on. Anything. Yeah. So you make a bunch of calls. Yeah. Uh, so like yesterday or the last video you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, who are you? Call I mean, like when I was a broker, I was making a hundred cold calls a day. I had my little ch thing right here and just yep. you know, bum 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 slash. And yep. I that was back in the early two thousand. You see like, that? That's like Mike and Mark. Off same the thing. Yeah. So who are you? I yeah. mean, but is there do not call? I mean, how who are you call? As, as yeah, so, I so I, I'm one of those guys that I like. I try to do everything in the most efficient way possible. Yeah, exactly. You know? So I, before I really like, when you get into real estate, you're kind of taught so much BS uh, and everybody's like, just talk to people, just talk to people. It's like, okay, what do you say? Right. Why are you talking to them? Who do you talk to? A lot, a lot, a lot. So <laughs> long story short is I just researched it. I was actually homeschooled. Okay. So one of, one of the advantages I think I have, and I didn't realize it until later in life was I know how to, everything was self-taught for me in high school and middle, and middle school, everything. So. I just kind of teach myself stuff. So meaning I research it, figure out how to do it. I don't like for someone to teach me, you know? Right. So I, the first thing I did is I reached out to all the top real estate agents in the nation. Um, and you'd be surprised the ones that reach out. It's only the top ones that reach out. Only number one that reaches out. It's so weird. So that reached out to you, reaching out to them. Yeah. So I, the ones that respond to you, yeah, I, found, I found in every avenue are the very best of the best. Everybody else doesn't respond. I don't know why. But I started reaching out to all the top of the nation. The number one real estate agent in each state always responded to me personally. That's weird, crazy. Right? Yeah, it's weird. So I've talked to so many crazy, cool, amazing agents. And one of them was a guy in Colorado Springs. I live in Colorado at the time. And he said, yeah, come up and shadow me for a day or two. And I was like, sweet. So I came up, shadowed him. Whoa. Kind of yeah, yeah. And I get the offer that from everybody almost. They all offer for me to shadow him. So I ended up shadowing three different agents in total. But one of them... The main one that really stuck on me was the guy in Carver Springs. Um, he's still there, still the number one agent there. Um, Ray Shea is his name, great guy. So he showed me kind of how everything worked. Um, and so I was like, man, I, I definitely want to do this now. So once I got into it, they kind of teach you, you know, make calls, you know, like I was saying. So what I did instead is I researched all the top training programs to see what I wanted to do. And yeah. so I bought, I bought one. When I got into it, I didn't really have any money. So I got, I had a $10,000 credit card though that I never used. So I maxed that, I basically maxed that out to start, um, which I wouldn't recommend for people who can't handle that pressure. But 
I maxed that out. And, and part of that was two grants, that training. And I basically just followed that training to a T. Um, and now, at first, I didn't anyways. Now, I tweak things and made the thing. Right, right, right. I, basically, who I call are people that sign up for my website that are looking to buy houses. Ah. That's who I call. So okay. I have, when I'm running ads full speed, I'll get 10 to 15 people a day to register on my website. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I have it really Facebook ads? What kind of you run Facebook? Facebook, Facebook only. That's all I do. And I tell you, I gotta get back on Facebook. I did. I tell you, Christian, I uh, I I got off Facebook because it's is. I mean, I look. I'm not a non political guy. I'm very political. But I yeah, just, same here. <laughs> but it's just it was it's pissed me off. I'm not gonna lie to you. people. Like people I know who I respect. I'm like I, I was weird. But anyway, so I got. Josh, off I'm gonna give you. Josh, I'm gonna give you a gift. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. It's called Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator. Facebook newsfeed eradicator. You can use it for any kind of plugin. I use my Google Chrome, so it's on a it's a Chrome plugin, and it makes you to where you only see motivational quotes and nobody's posts instead. Oh, <laughs> are you kidding me? It's just a oh. plugin. It's beautiful. I never see anybody's posts on Facebook, so I just get on there, run my ads, leave. I never have to see anything. It's Dude. it's game changer for me because it it's not, I'm the same way. I can't handle looking at people's stuff. Oh. That's yep. fantastic. It is Christian. fantastic. Yeah. Because I had huge success running my own Facebook ads. Yep. I did a webinar for estate tax or something like that in Rhode Island. And I'm in Georgia. Yep. And I said, let me just try some Facebook ads. And I probably spent 20 bucks a day for five days. Yep. I had 15 people register in wow. Rhode Island. And I'm not even in Rhode Island. I just wanted to see. Yep. I think I had nine attend. And, uh, and I did some other ads on some of my – I just – it worked like a charm. I said – but then I just got, oh, this is perfect. Because I say, like, look, Facebook works. It works. I don't Definitely. care what anybody says. The advertising yeah. works. Yeah. But this is fan. So Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator, just a plug-in on, on your Chromebook. Yep. And it just takes everything away. No more feed. Well, especially now, if all these big companies are not advertising on Facebook. I was going to say, now is even better than that. That's what's getting rid of. Oh, yeah. dude. It's the best right now. All right, so you're running Facebook ads, and you self-taught yourself how to – I mean, you watch very – I get all that, but you said, let yeah. me just try this, you know, A-B testing, yep. all that. Yep. And you're getting – did you say 10 to 15 inquiries a day? A day? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, Christian, how much you're spending on Facebook ads on, on yeah, a regular so – on a regular month, 500 a month. That's not bad, man. No. For 10 to 15 freaking inquiries a day? No, my average cost per lead is like 80 cents. <sighs> Dude, that's freaking – are you yeah. doing any? Are you should do a course on Facebook ads, man. I'm telling I, you. You know, I've done it, but like I'm in that. I'm in a weird like. Remember, I told you I want to like make everything the best possible. Yeah. I have like a course idea and stuff, but I'm like everybody's doing this stuff. I yeah, almost don't. No. I almost don't want to do it because I don't want to look like that. You know what I mean? I completely understand. It drives yeah. me nuts. I hate those dudes. <laughs> you know I, I, I mean? Dude, I, I completely yeah. understand. That's that's yeah. actually the minute I said that you should do a course, yeah. like oh, it just kind of like that's what. Yeah, kind of like I, I got immediately picture it. this cheesy dude saying, "Look, I've sold this many houses. Right, right, Here's right, how you do right. it. Look at my you know? plane. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's only nine ninety five, and I'm charging somebody nine ninety five who won't take any action. And I'm actually going to make their life worse. You know what I mean? So. Or, they'll, or they'll say it's normally nine thousand, but I'm discounted by ninety seven percent. So it's a dollar ninety seven. You're like, dude, this whole yeah. thing is just a, it's all fake. It's a yeah. And especially yeah. if it's working for you, man. I help it's working yeah. for you. So you're yeah. getting. So you're basically, you get these inquiries, you're just ba you're banging out the calls, banging out the calls, yeah. banging out the yeah. calls. And to be honest, there's nothing I hate more in this world than making phone calls. Yeah. I hate it so much. It's not even funny. I mean, so what I, are you uh, doing to, I mean, you hate it, but you're doing yeah. it. So what are you doing to make it so you don't hate it as much? What's the, the sauce that you're using? This is going to sound weird, but not caring about it. That, t t don't, 100%. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, I don't care about the outcome of the calls. Yep. I just, uh, I'm, I Dude. have my, I have a number that I have to hit every day. And it's one of my five, I have five critical tasks that I do every day. And it's one of those things I'm like, okay, if I do this task, I'll feel good. If I don't do this task, I won't feel good today. And dude, you are, 20 years ago, I took, I found in my, in Baltimore, Maryland, we had our brokerage training thing. And uh, I came across his books on tape by a guy named Aaron Hemsley, who did maximum sales performance. And he just said exactly what you said. It matters not what the freaking guy on the other line says. Who cares? All that yeah. matters is that you pick up the phone and you die. And yeah. That changed everything for me, Chris. Yeah. I was like, I don't even care. I literally could care less. And I just, yeah. and this, man, he gave this example. He's like, I'm giving myself an M&M for picking up the phone. I've given myself an M&M. He's giving himself rewards. 
yeah, for yeah, yeah. positioning municipal bonds. You know, the guy told him to screw off. He's an ass. He goes, he goes, wow, that didn't bother me. Give myself an M&M. He just hung yeah. up. Goes, I said, dude, that, it just changed everything. Because what the tra- same thing with me is like, see the people, see the people. You're like, but man, if I see the people and they tell me no, then I feel like an ass. And he's like, yeah. and he's like, you can't. You got to say, who cares? Uh, dude, yeah. that is perfect. I'll tell you another little trick. Like yeah. anybody watching this is in sales, that's actually pretty awesome. Is you get the only thing is you have to have a good record, at least two, three months of tracking your numbers and like tracking how many calls you make, how many conversations you get. That's what I was writing down. That's what you're me right now. Calls, conversations, and appointments. Yes. You track yeah. all of those, and then you see how much money you made from that. Yep. You can then divide it by the number of calls you made. Man. And so for me, I make six dollars and twenty-seven cents per call. Yeah. So then every time I make a call, I'm like six bucks. Yeah. And every time I have a conversation, it's worth 126. Yeah. So when someone tells me to F off, I'm like, you just pay me 126 bucks. Man, that's, yeah. <laughs> dude, it, that's Aaron Helmsley right there. This is from is the, it, yeah. the 80s. Yeah. That's exactly what he says. So what, what the issue yeah. is, you get your commission run every month, and yet you do all these freaking calls every day. Every call is a slice on you, and then you don't see yeah. any reward until the end of the month. But yeah. exactly right. It was for every. That's exactly what I did too. I did exactly yeah. what you said. That's cool. Yeah, dude. I, and I was doing hundred. I said for every single time I pick up the phone is worth whatever it was. The yeah. problem with my line of work was that uh, I went into a bear market where the market was just tanking. Mm-hmm. And for me, I was building up a fee base. It just man. And I had four kids by then, Christian. My wife wasn't working. Dang. And we were yeah. down. I was making like 30000 a year. Jesus. And I was like, I just, I couldn't. And I knew if I could have, if I could have made it, I would have been fine. It, it, it yeah. worked out fine because I'm doing great now. But I just, yeah. I'll never forget that. I said, I got, you know, and I was offered a job in San Antonio. I said, oh, do I, do I want to keep doing this? And I, I just remember thinking I got, you know, two babies, bouncing yeah. babies. And I was like, plus my two other kids, I said, I just got to take the safe. But it was the same thing. It's like, like if we did not have that market chaos in 2008, I would have probably done fine in that regard. But yeah. it is what it is, man. And you, uh, yeah, well, honestly, if you would have stuck that out, which might have been impossible because of your family, honestly. But if you would have stuck it out, I bet you would have been killing it because if you were making calls during the bear market, exactly. all those people are calling you back afterwards. Yep, 100% you know? right. That's the time yeah. to make the calls for sure. Yeah. But like you, but you had said something incredibly important there too. The stress, you know what I'm saying? So if you, then yeah. you start thinking, I got a guy on the horn, I got to, I got to make the sale, got to make the sale. And that's where you're Commission. Leave. You need you're commission leave. breath. That's what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> people can, people can smell that stuff. Dude. That, absolutely. It's like, it yeah. was like trying to pick up chicks. You sound exactly. desperate. They don't want nothing to do with you, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to sound like you don't care. You know, honestly, it's crazy, but you do. Just like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, that's why the girls like the bad boys because the bad yeah. boys don't care. But you know, yeah. the uh, uh, the uh, anyway. So that's cool, man. So now in the uh, in your real estate business, I mean, so you get a lot of inquiries. Are you actually finding that people are moving to South Dakota rapidly, specifically, or are they just like, yeah, we'll, we'll see? You know what I'm saying? And tell like, my YouTube channel. I couldn't have told you that honestly, um, because the people that sign up my website are people that live here typically. And they're looking to buy a house here. Oh. Um, yeah, but so people that now that have my YouTube channel, we have a ton of people moving here, and all of them are moving here for almost the same exact reason, honestly. Vast majority. Because all, they want a more free place to live, essentially. Yeah, political majority, political reasons. They want to get out of their state. You know, I have a lot of people moving here from California right now. Yeah. And um, I had a guy tell me the craziest story that during like halfway through this whole pandemic thing, um, he was in the park. Yeah, he was in the park somewhere in California. He lives in LA. He was in the park and he wasn't wearing a mask. And he got physically attacked by three women because he wasn't wearing one. The cop showed up. He got arrested for not wearing a mask. They did not get arrested. <laughs> yeah. When he told me that, I was like, man, I'd be leaving too. <laughs> I'd be getting out of there quick. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I know. It boggles the mind. Yeah, you know. I mean, so you got a new daughter. You ever just worry? I mean, look, I'm older than you. I got four. I get all that, but I still sometimes can't help but just worry. Like, what kind of world are these kids going to inherit when it's okay to assault someone who doesn't wear a mask? Yeah. And then you, I, were the I one don't know. I, you know, like I feel like naturally, I'm kind of, I'm a natural. Like, I will get into conspiracies. All, yes. Okay. Sure. If I, I go down that direction. Yeah. So for me, like recently, what I like the beginning of the whole coronavirus stuff. I was hardcore conspiracy. I was like, this is all BS. Right. I don't believe any of this stuff. 
um, this is all, you know, like you know, Trump or whatever, you know, that's kind of what was going through my head. Right. And now I'm like, I was like, after two weeks in, I was like, I have to stop watching this stuff. Yes. Right, and right. I have to focus on building my business and that, yeah. cause that will go down. You can build your business up over three years yeah. and you can ruin it in two weeks. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. how it feels anyways. So I was like, okay, quit focusing. So I have not watched news or anything okay. since two weeks into the coronavirus. And I feel so much better. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So that's I would right. probably be feeling real negative about it. I'd be feeling real um, nervous about it if I was watching, but I'm not. That's, uh, well, that's I didn't really know what was happening with the protests and stuff either. Cause I wasn't watching. I was trying not to watch anything. Um, but I that's kept hearing stuff, it, obviously. That's, uh, that's, I mean, literally that's the way to do it. You say, I just, I just, it's, it's not a, I mean, that's the thing. As a Christian, we know at the end of the day, we know what ultimately happens yeah. that Jesus will, you know, reign supreme. Right. But still, in the day of the day, you're like, Ugh. but then if you just pay no mind to it, you know, you're just yeah. like, I can focus on what I can focus on, let everything yeah. else fall as it may. That's all you can control. And yet, some like you, some like me, who's very, you know, just, I don't know, we're probably deep thinkers, Frank. I bet you are yeah. too. You're yeah. like, but, 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 and you're like, at some point, that's why I turn off Facebook. And it's such yeah. a relief. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I don't have to care what these other guys are saying, which is just yeah. clownish. But still, it's like I sit there and I still I watch this stuff and I'm just watching people who I know are smart. I'm like, I don't get how you're getting sucked into this, but yeah, yeah. yeah it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. I got to That's good advice, Christian. So, but, right, then, you your, know, but then, Josh, on the other end of it, I also get in myself. And I'm like, you know, Christian, are you being like, are you taking the high road or are you taking the pansy road? Yeah. Why not? You know, because I'm like, it, you know, I think one of the problems is not enough people that think like we do, which is the majority most likely right the silent majority and yeah. the problem is we're silent yeah that's nah, and we've allowed a lot of things to happen by being silent so what you know? but that's the issue do you say okay i don't want to take the pansy rules so i'm going to be active and posting all kinds of stuff and the, which doesn't change anyone's mind right right but that's not good for your soul i mean i literally yeah. think to argue with with idiots is i mean a guy named uh, nasim nicholas taleb you know basically calls them intellectual idiots you know they're smart yeah people by credentials but you argue with them and you're just getting dirty with their idiocy idiocy yeah. as well yeah. even though they might be smart credentials just like doesn't make sense so you just gotta yeah. let it's almost like you know jesus he says you know you dust off your you go to town they, they don't want to talk to you you dust off your boot your sandals and walk away it's kind of it's, it's you know it's amazing how much you can learn in that good book i tell you if it, it is so, you know my brother said something interesting yesterday my younger brother he's he's two years younger than me but um He's kind of somewhat famous in social media. He's got like half a million followers and stuff. Oh. But he is, uh, we, were, we have interesting conversations all the time. And he said, he was like, I was talking about, we were talking about this. And I was like, you know, I kind of felt like a bitch. And I really, because I don't ever say anything. Yeah. And I've watched these people that I know say stuff. And I'm like, they are so stupid, you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel, and I was like, but I could probably, I'm pretty persuasive. So I could probably do some work and persuade them. But I know I'd be chastised and I would be, you know, I'd probably lose half my clients, to be yes. frank, yeah. you know, and um, I was like, you know, and then he said, you know, pretty interesting, isn't it, that the disciples, and my brother's not super religious, he goes, pretty interesting, the disciples all died trying to say the truth, didn't they? He was like, sometimes, the, and he goes, and now it's normal to be a Christian. He was like, sometimes, he goes, sometimes the beginning people are the ones that get killed. Man. And I was like, damn, <laughs> he got me there, man, you know, I was like, it's a good point. It's totally, well, the funny, even, even further than that, don't forget, Peter actually denied Jesus and he saw yeah. all the stuff Jesus was doing because yeah. the mob was, you know, and the little girl said, Peter, you know, and he said, no, I don't, little girl. Yeah. How and much yet, is that happening right now? It, it, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. mob is ascending and, but, but I don't know the answer to that. That's, I yeah. mean, it's just like, what does Christian or Josh do? I don't know, but I just know Peter denied Jesus after seeing everything that Jesus had done. And yeah. yet that same Peter later on was hung upside down. Um, yeah. you know, and upside down. Yeah. So something rem remarkable happened there. But at yeah. the end of the day, the mob is so powerful. That, you, know I mean, it's hard. you know what's crazy, Josh? And you might know this. Are you into history at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I didn't know this until two weeks ago. And I'm super into history. And I don't know how I didn't know this. Um, in the American Revolution, and this is like a trend in history that I looked into after this. Do you know only 30% of America wanted to descend from England. It's crazy. it's crazy. And I was like, what? It's crazy. And I'm like, and everybody's always talking about right now. It's like, ah, they're just the loud majority. They're just the loud I'm like, maybe that's the issue is that they are the loud minority. You know what I mean? I'm like, the loud minority got us to get away from England. 
a third, a third, a third. A third was yeah. Tory, a third was freedom, a third didn't care. Yeah. And then of that third who, who was uh, won freedom, very few of them thought, actually picked up arms. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's the same way in the Civil War. I didn't know that either. And only 30% of the South was against uh, or was for slavery. Exactly. And you know what crazy. I mean? Yeah, like I've read, um, and this is probably, this should probably get me taken offline for saying this, but I read Stonewall Jackson's book. Uh, it's a really long book. It's like 800 pages. I read it a couple of years ago. And in that book, I remember specifically that they never found any correspondence from Stonewall Jackson saying anything about slavery. Really? The only thing, the only thing he ever said was, we're being attacked by the North and we're going right. to defend our homes. That's all he said. He never mentioned that they were protecting slavery. But, you know, history is written by the victor. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. So, well, the, so yeah. I mean, the, the thing is... The funny thing to me is I always wondered just about the Civil War is like, uh, like my mom, she's always not like Thomas Jefferson because Thomas Jefferson is a was a rich cavalier, literally, you know, yeah. the elite who was telling everybody else how to live while the poor, you know, obviously slaves, but then the poor whites were just totally at his back, you know, not just Tom, but you know, yeah. they had this huge uh, wealthy cavalier class that was telling everybody else how to live. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. And yet that was who was proponents of slaves were those guys. It wasn't yeah. just the Joe Schmo who, who emigrated from Ireland, who was sitting yeah. in the Shenandoah Valley. He didn't, I mean, he's like, dude, I'm just trying to survive. I, yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's and, who, and who knows? I mean, maybe Stonewall Jackson was an asshole and maybe he was super for slaves. I don't know. But I'm just telling you what the book said, you know, no. that no, he was, he's, they didn't say anything about it. He could have been complete, you know, completely for it. I don't know. No, but, it's the um, same thing with, but if you look at like Benedict Arnold too, Benedict yeah. Arnold was a hugely successful general. And he said, yeah. the American system is so jacked up with these idiots that they're, they're actually leading my men to death on, on, by false pretense. And that's why he yeah. switched. He didn't yeah. switch because he hated America. He said, these guys are run by fools. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I think America is divine. How, how did we get here from that idiots? It's nuts. But it is then we, yeah. you look at Samuel Adams. He was a rabble rouser. They couldn't stand him in Boston, but he was, yeah, the, he, he was the guy with the loudest mic. And it's just, it's crazy. You know, one of the most hated men, like one of our founding fathers, one of the most hated one was Hamilton. Everybody hated it. A lot of people hated Hamilton, you know? I did not know and, that. And he dueled, he dueled and killed so many people. Because back then, that's how you settled things, you know? And he ended up dying from a duel, too. I don't know if you knew that. But I, knew, I did know that, but I didn't know yeah. that he was not a well-liked guy. And yet... No, uh, he, was, he was hated by... I don't think it was named Tom Jefferson. That's nuts, man. He had a uh, rival, some rival that was one of the founding fathers that absolutely hated him. Um, and, you know, but sometimes that's who it takes to get stuff done, I guess, you know? Well, it's just crazy how history is determined by loud mouth, you know, types on the, on the right side of history and the yeah. bad side of history, be it Lenin, yeah. be it you know, Samuel Adams. And yet that's kind of the debate. It's like, if you say nothing, are you allowing these loudmouth fools to take over? Or I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a yeah. I don't know either. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's really tough because with what I do, I have a lot of clients that are don't think the way I do. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, do I have a family? Do I? And you know, I think that's how a lot of people think. Like, do I risk that? Because you see people post one thing that's slightly off topic for what they want you to say, and they lose their job. Or whatever you know what i mean ruin your yeah life. no on my youtube channel i took a uh i've always i've started two years ago christian and uh i've always been a defender of uh, fossil fuels natural gas uh, yeah. uh republican taxation not republican so much uh this last six months uh, since the coronavirus i've really and i've always been anti green new deal and stuff because if, if yeah. you're from maine and you think uh photovoltaic is going to warm your house in the wintertime. You're a freaking fool, man. We need to also <laughs> fuel to heat your home. And yeah. uh, but anyway, so I've always been anti that. But the last, since the coronavirus, I've taken a, 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 a turn to say, this is nuts. And, and people get mad. But it's interesting. I do think at the end of the day, I like companies and people who are, who are at least not afraid to say what they feel. And if they yeah. don't, you know, if, if, and, and they won't kowtow. I'm just yeah. picking up the dog here. You're good. Bullies. And, uh, and I think there's more of us who like that. So I'm not telling you what to do. I just know for me, yeah. I said, I, am I, I, I thought that how many clients am I turning off by taking a stance? And I said, look, at the end of the day, I just, I believe that God's going to control everything. And I just yeah. got to do what I feel is the best service for freedom. And, uh, yeah, I mean, even me, even me saying the stuff I've said on this is probably, yeah. 
polarizing. You'll probably lose some people, but yeah. you'll probably gain. I, and I think yeah. at the end of the day, you just can't let the mobs win. I hate yeah, mobs. I, I don't agree. care if it's the mobs on the right, mobs. I hate it. I the agree. Passion. It's bullies, man. I, agree. And I'm, I it hate is. bullies. Whatever yeah. happened to hating bullies is weird. I know. It is weird. Um, all right, so real quick, we'll get you get out of here. Yeah. You're, you're feeling pretty good about the real estate in Rapid City. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, you're getting a lot of inquiries, a lot of people. And obviously, this isn't just Christian, the real estate guy. Yeah. Uh, Christy Noam said the same thing when I watched her thing yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that um, – so, I, obviously, she has an incentive to show everybody that South Dakota right. – I get all that. But, you know, this is two people, folks, I'm talking to the, that are saying – uh, South Dakota is uh, is moving rapidly in a growth oriented direction. Um, uh, that's that's interesting, man. We and also have part of, part of Rapid City's growth too. Just so you know, yeah. is we have a giant Air Force base here. Oh, that's right. And that Air Force base is growing because what they're bringing in a new bomber, like the the new stealth oh, bombers. I was going to ask about that. That's yeah. not on like a target to close down or anything. That is actually a pretty actively used Air Force base. Yeah, it's growing. They're, they're like growing. I think they're adding 1,200 families to that Air Force base right now. Really? Yeah, which is going to be even more and plus people buying houses. So the real estate market's going to be crazy. So Are you a military price. brat by chance? Was, me? No. Yeah. no. Okay. You just I'm moved all over the place, but not to a restaurant rap. rap. My dad on, uh, ran restaurants, so. Oh, um really yeah, yeah. Woo! tough yeah. job there man oh i know that's that's what i did before actually i when i turned 18 i started running restaurants um okay. and then you and i, I got a lot of similarities brother i tell you man <laughs> girls funny. night out they always say why do you think women drink free it's not because the women drink free it's because the men follow the women and the men are the ones it's who true. drink alcohol which makes that's them true restaurant. yeah it's very yeah. true it's yeah restaurants restaurants are tough Rush into the toughest money for the smallest margin of real plan. And that's they what freaking pisses me off that they're saying they're not essential. Well, hell, they're essential to the guy who put all his life savings in the restaurants. Yeah, Ooh, they don't yeah. care. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that I'm convinced that a lot of this is a ply to destroy small businesses. I, I really I, am. Man, I could not agree yeah. more. I completely yeah. agree that they don't like small business. They don't like entrepreneurs. Yeah, you know, know. especially in the minority communities, because entrepreneurs in the minority communities yeah. break that chain of dependence upon big government. I'm telling you right now, yeah. I, they don't like it. They, they yeah. like having people at the heel. And this is this isn't just Democrats. This is a uniparty. Across, this is oh, totally. Yeah, and I've totally. said it a million times. They, they yeah. want people uh, to be at their dependence. And so if they yeah. can if they can make you dependent on them. They can tell you how to live. I'm t I completely I agree. agree. I agree with you. No, I think I think it's exactly what it is. My family's been lucky. My dad owns eighteen restaurants. Oh man! Um, and they're all fast food. Um, Sonic, Sonic Drive-In. You know what that oh, is? Yeah, Sonic. Yeah. Right on. He owns eighteen Sonics, and they have been the busiest fast food. They've been the busiest restaurant train during the coronavirus. So my family's been extremely lucky in that aspect. Um, you know, we, there's other challenges that come along with it, obviously. Like you can't find employees whatsoever right now. Labor, labor's got to be. That want to work. Yeah, that want to work. So it's that side of it's a disaster right now. But as far as sales, now we've been pretty lucky in that because I it was one full service, and it took a ninety percent hit. Yeah, ten percent of their sales is all they have. Now, now, now that South Dakota's opened up, it's just full. It's fully busier than it was last year. Now, so he had some up there in South Dakota. He owns uh, four Sonics in South Dakota, and then he owns a full service chain here too. Oh man! Yeah. Yeah. You know what Sonic's known for, don't you? The happy hour right? specials at two yeah. to four. Oh, Jesus. When you work there, you hate that. <laughs> they hate the two to four crap, you know? You're like, all the cheap we love it because, like I said, we got four. And we go through there. We're yep. like, all right, we'll take four of the sl – whatever the slushy yep. things are, half, yep. whatever it is. Like, man, it's a yep. smoking deal. <laughs> it is a good deal. So there's actually four kids in my family, too. So I bet my dad can relate to that for sure. <laughs> the deal is where it's at. Oh, man. Christian, you're a good guy. So how do people get a hold of you, man? So um, if you want, you can just put in my cell number, my email, um, social media, all, all my social to... media. Yeah, cool. All my social media is Christian Morrison SD on every platform. Well, Christian um, Morrison SD. Okay, yeah. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll put links Dakota. to YouTube. Um, yeah. And if, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and if on Fa I don't have, like I said, I'm not on Facebook right yeah. now. But I'll look at this. But still, at the end of the day, if people are on Facebook, they want to get out a hold of you. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, – uh, so I emailed Christian yesterday, guys, and I've been watching him. I just like his stuff. And I emailed yeah. him immediately right away. And 
and I'm not saying he'll do the same for you, but I would, I yeah. would, something tells me that he's a, he has a good sense of uh, client service. I have a safety yeah. suspicion that's the case. So yeah, I try to get back to everybody really fast. So it's my goal. I, I know uh, one of the things I talk about a lot of Christians, like the best places to retire in South Dakota with mm -hmm. no state, we didn't talk about no sale, no uh, state income tax. Yeah. No state income tax. Yeah. I, I'm like, so I'm you got no state income tax. Uh, you got a free uh, state. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, I mean, obviously if you're, if you're lived in Shreveport, Louisiana, your whole life, it might be a little bit tough to, to move up there, but I tell oh, you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you're from a, you know, let's we'll say Spokane, Washington, or if you're from Minneapolis, I mean, why would you not consider South Dakota? I don't understand. I mean, I'm sitting there yeah. thinking Minneapolis or South or Minnesota or South Dakota. I mean, it, it's the difference between night and day. Man. I think for me, when I first looked at the area, you get on time for a quick second. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, just making sure. Um, if I when I looked at the area, I thought my brother actually is really big in wildlife fisher. He's a big fisher and hunter, um, and so he lived here before we all did. And I was like, I would never move there. <laughs> you know, I was like, that's just Podunk, South Dakota. It's farmers right. and farmers right. and cowboys. You know, it's snow, I mean, right? right? Yeah, and cold. And yeah. when I visited Rapid City, I was like, this place is awesome. Yeah. Like I don't, there's just something about Rapid City. It's like the the feeling of the town, or or some I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. It's like you got mountains, you got you can ski in the winter in our ski mountain, and I'm I live in Colorado, and I think our ski mountain is awesome. You know, um, so, if so Colorado just, guy can say the skiing's good. Well, that's that speaks pretty well. To the yeah, some some guy commented on my one of my channel on my uh, videos because I said it reminded me of Colorado, and he goes, "I think that's a bit of a stretch to compare it." I'm like, "Well, you could say that, but it's really not." To me, it's not, and I live there. You know? And you live there. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? <laughs> so, so don't tell me it's a stretch. Yeah. No, I mean, and I really like it. I mean, you got rivers, you got fishing, you go fly fishing, which I've done most of my life, and we have a bunch of lakes here, so you can go boating. We got everything, you know. And it's cost of living is eight percent below the national average, so you save money living here. Um, housing costs are starting to go up, but yeah. when I first when I first got here, it's crazy. When I first got here, the average price in Rapid City was under two hundred. Oh. And now it's almost 270 now. It's crazy. And uh, no state income tax. I mean, literally and, no state, and no state income, income tax. tax. Yeah. And groceries. Can you and garden up there? I'm just curious. Can I mean, people got garden. I don't know how the. We have, you know, we have one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we grow. Food. My fiance does. I don't. I don't know. I said we. But yeah, she grows all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We have really good soil here, too. So, yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. I guess you'd have to. You got all these so many farmers up there. And yeah. got, I didn't think about that. I was like, oh, yeah. you garden. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, you definitely can. And uh, I don't know. I think it's like a little, it's becoming more known. But when I first got here, here, the hidden gem is becoming less hidden, Chris. Yeah, which is cool to me. I like that. You know, I mean, we can only grow up so much. You can't, That's what I was say. Everybody can't move here. <laughs> it'll, never be a, it'll never be a Denver. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it can't be just because the right. way the landscape is. Which is awesome to me. But Chattanooga, Chattanooga's got about two hundred thousand people or so. You know, it's a yeah. smaller town, and yeah. uh, you know, it's, but it's it has everything everything you need. So it could easily become you know how many is that people Chattanooga, are Tennessee. Yeah, exactly. South Tennessee. Okay. Oh, it's about a hundred thousand people in the surrounding area. Here. Okay, yeah. So it's about yeah. a half the size of Chattanooga, and that's Perfect, uh, yeah. and, and, you know probably put another thirty thousand people on there without you know stretching it too much. I think. I think I think we could double, honestly, yeah. because I think there's a lot of once you visit, you'll see there's a lot of little areas that are just like green, very green. They can oh. have, we could add a bunch of stuff to them, and it wouldn't feel congested at all. It, it, so that's once, what I was getting ready to say. You yeah. won't feel like you're like, oh, no. my goodness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, gotta I think we can double, here. and I think we will probably double in the next 10 years or so, honestly. That's I really awesome. do. Yeah. Chris, you're a good man. I don't care what they say. Keep in touch with me, would you, brother? That's good I will, stuff, Josh. I will. And, uh, it's been fun. And uh, maybe yeah. we'll try again in a few months just to see how things are shaking out yeah. coming fall. Uh, if you would, if you get a chance, uh, for me, just it's just me, but I'm sure other people too. Yeah. You know, the scenery stuff is, you know, I love the videos you do, like when you're showing the neighborhoods and the city. I just love yep. those. I, you I like those? Why. Okay. And, uh, so in more the fall, of that, you like that better? Oh, I, well, I, I don't want to say better. I just, I like them. I, but I enjoy yeah. the, uh, you did the one where you looked at the neighborhoods. I just remember the one where you walk downtown, there's a statue of the guy and you, you give him a high five. I thought yeah. that was funny. <laughs> and that's it just shows you what it looks like there no one else is yeah. doing that and so yeah. for someone who likes to look at the scenery without having to actually set foot there yeah um, it's interesting in the fall too so if you get a chance you know come yeah, fall time, i will do that foliage oh that'd be freaking fantastic yeah we'll go through the hills soon i'm going to start doing videos on all the little towns in the hills oh yeah. so everybody can see what those are like oh. too oh. so those will, be, those will be cool yeah
too, man. All right, Josh. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks for having me on. For real. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you, man. Stay <laughs> safe. Right. We'll see you, man. See you guys. Bye-bye.